Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on into the studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and it is time for Clay Share Live. Each week, we bring you a live tutorial, demonstration, Q&A session, studio visit, you name it, we do it. This month, uh, we're really excited because July, we have GR Pottery Forms as the sponsor for Clay Share. So the whole month long, you're gonna see a lot from GR Pottery Forms coming your way here. Now, usually in our lives, we let the sponsor, the sponsor's rep, do the demo. And tonight, that rep is moi, because fabulous Jeff from GR Pottery Forms is taking a little vacay. Although I did see he's doing some demos up in Canada. So folks, if you're in Canada, uh, you need to check that out because you could see Jeff do demos in person if you can find him. It's, it's where's Jeff because he travels a lot. So I will be doing the demo tonight and we're going to be making plates and we're going to be using the WA2 system. Now this will work with the WA1 if you have it. The main difference between the WA2 and the WA1 is the WA2 has this clipped side on the little insert. The WA1 doesn't have that. And what this does is this prevents this from rotating when it's in the board. Um, it can be a which could be a problem, right? So you can use either WA2 or WA1 with the forms, but I have the WA2, so we're gonna use it. And then the forms we're gonna use, you can use any of Jeff's forms on the WA system. He came out with the RD2 system, the RD2 forms for the WA system, which I really love, and I got some plates to show you made with them. These are the only two sizes he currently has, I hope he's gonna hook us up with some other sizes. We're also gonna be giving away a WA2 board system and some RD2 forms. So we're gonna do that at the end of the broadcast. Now, as always, to enter any of our giveaways, just go to clayshare.com and sign up for our email list and you're on. Now, premium members of Clayshare, you guys, you're automatically entered in all of our giveaways. You don't have to do anything at all except sit back and relax and, and maybe win. So we're gonna give that away at the end of tonight's live. And if you wanna pick up any of Jeff's forms throughout the entire month of July, he's doing 15% off with the code CLAYSHARE, all capitals, just CLAYSHARE. Put it in, save 15%. Uh, so if you're not sure about getting these right now, you don't, don't have to run and jump and get them today because we're going to be doing things all month long using Jeff's forms. So if you order tonight, you're probably going to order again. Not necessarily a bad thing. And then in prime time, that's at 6.15, in the private class for our premium members, we are going to be making these fabulous mini bakers using the new Wallies. And if you haven't seen those yet, you're gonna to wanna to check that out. We had Debbie Dela Cruz join us last month and she did do a live. So some of you saw these already used and some of you probably have them. So we're gonna be doing these. I'm gonna show you how to do them. I've got a couple of Debbie's cutters. I'll use some of those. I'm gonna use them without cutters and I'm gonna probably stick some rim templates into the mix. We'll see, we'll see what we get done. Uh, it depends on time and how much we can finish. So I'm gonna show you some plates and why we wanna use the RD2 forms versus the regular forms. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. You wish you had a size bigger than that nine and 12. I know, I need, 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 need the in-between, right? Okay, so when you make a plate with Jeff's GR Pottery forms, I'm gonna show you a plate that I made. And this is using the Marigold rim template that we have that are downloadable templates that you can just print out and make them out of craft foam, make them out of paper. If you have a laser cutter, you can cut them or a CNC machine or a Cricut. Now you can also use Jeff's rim templates. And this is my Marrakesh design that Jeff and I collabed with. And that's actually what I use to make this plate right here. So what you do is you cut your shape out and then you press your form. But with traditional GR pottery forms, we get this sharp edge. Do you see this sharp transition from where the side meets the bottom? I don't mind it, but some folks did. And Jeff listened and he went ahead and did, and did these curved forms. And so that's what we have here. When you look at it, you see how we have a curve on the plate? So there's no sharp edge, no sharp rim change. I shouldn't say edge. I should say that sharp change over. Do you see the curves? See how the curves showing up in the, in the reflection? 
So you get that. And then if you look at the back, see how we have a curve on the back? And this we have a little bit of a sharp. But I don't mind this. I don't think one is better than the other. It's just folks were asking for this, so he did it. One thing I do like is I do a lot of scraffito. And that's what this is on this plate here. So when I'm doing the hand carving and I get to that point where the rim becomes the bottom, if there's that sharp transition, sometimes this area right here can be difficult to carve. So with these forms, that transition is so nice and subtle. Here's another one that I did with the scraffito with the larger size of the RD2 form. And you can see I have just, see how it's just a slight curve? It just, see if you can see that just a slight little curve on it. Now you can make that curve more pronounced, which is what I did with this guy. See how much more of a curve we got going here? Let me hold that kind of flat. See the depth? That's because I did a more of a drape technique with this. And so you get almost like a shallow bowl, but it still could be a plate if you wanted it to be. And of course, some of them I put feet on, some I don't. It just depends on how I'm feeling that day. I personally like a foot on a plate but sometimes I don't do it. So it's, it's really up, up to you when you're making. You just got some Wally's from Jeff on Sunday. Woohoo! Oh, you're gonna love those. I'm having the best time with them. All right, so we're gonna start, and I've got some slabs here, and I'm just gonna go ahead. Now, the Wa and the Wa 2, and when you buy um, Waz from Jeff, he's only selling the Waz 2s. So if you go to buy it, you're not going to get the Waz 1. Some suppliers might still have Waz 1s in their inventory, but you're going to get the Waz 2s. And these do fit on your pottery wheel, and Jeff has done a bunch of demos on his YouTube page, and you can check out GR Pottery Forms' Facebook page as well, and you'll see a bunch of demos using the Waz 2 on a wheel. I don't usually use it on a wheel. I do, uh, when I use the wheel, I just throw. I don't usually use other things, but sometimes I do. Not always. But a lot of times I use this when I'm hand building. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do tonight. So I think it'll be fun. All right, so let's get the clay that I have over here. I rolled out a slab a little while ago. I don't know, about 30 minutes ago. It's 3 eighths of an inch thick, which is really, really, really thick normally but we're gonna be smoothing it down and if you wanna add texture, of course you can add texture to it. But I'm gonna make you all a plate and we're gonna use the nine inch RD2 form and we're gonna use the Marrakesh rim template and I'm gonna do what Jeff does. I'm gonna, where he puts the template down first and then the form on top. So we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it differently than I usually do. But I'm gonna do one another way as well. So we're, we're gonna do it a couple different ways. The other thing I really like is like when I made this plate here, I used the rim template to cut out my shape from my clay and then I just draped it over the form and I, I wasn't worried about it meeting the edge. It didn't have to be that big. So this was a set of plates. This is the only one I have left Super cute. They were really popular, so that's a good thing. All right, let's go ahead and smooth out our clay. I have got, eh, like I said, it's about 3 eighths of an inch thick, but we want to smooth it out and thin it down a little, and we'll thin it down with a rolling pin as well. Now, I need a little more clay than this, so I'm going to cut some of this off and just set this to the side. We don't need that all right now. So smoothing out the clay will stretch the clay a little bit and thin it down. If you find that your clay is too thick still, you can always roll it a bit thinner and I probably will roll this a little thinner because it's really thick. The peace and love plate, is that a roller? How do you get it? So yes, it's one of our mini rolling pins. And uh, due to the demand that we have for our mini rolling pins, we've made it so that only premium members of ClayShare can order our pins. 
We've had to do that just because the demand has been off the charts. So our choices were either raise the prices significantly, which we did not want to do, or to limit it to only premium members of Clayshare. So that's what we did. All right, so I smoothed this down, but looking at it, I'm still seeing it's much thicker than I want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and thin it down. If you, um, you know, you can use anything for a roller. I'm just using an old rolling pin that I had that the handles broke off. <laughs> and so I keep it around because it's great. Just, it's, it's like a French style rolling pin. So if you have those, you'll know what I'm talking about. All right, so we're just smoothing that out. You can work with anything. You don't need a special rolling pin to roll things out. You really don't need special anything in making pottery. I'm going to tell you that's it's a secret. You don't need special stuff. Pretty much everything that you do, you can find other ways of doing it. There's always subs for everything. All right, so let's put a texture on here. Um, I know it's crazy, and it's like, do you know, just a little fact, Yesterday was the hottest day ever recorded in history on the planet. Can you believe that? And so today it feels like it's the hot, even hotter here in Vermont. So um, because it's so hot, I'm going to use the Winter Village <laughs> rolling pin to cool myself down just by looking at it. So if you want to put texture on your pieces, you can. And I like to roll from the barrel, but some people will roll from the handles. All right, so we're just going to put a little texture. You could do uh, under glaze decal. You could use stamps. Debbie has some fabulous rollers from De La Design Gifts, so you can check her out. Her stamps and things are amazing. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, you pick your size rim template if you're gonna use one, and you pick your size form. So I have done that. I'm using the nine inch form from Jeff, the RD2 form. And then I'm using this size Marrakesh rim template, also from Jeff. Um, it's our collab that we did together. I was just seeing if I had my, where did I put my little tape measure? I moved everything about, ah, this will work. Ruler will work. All right, I'll give it to you. In centimeters, it's 25. And in inches, I was asked to please give centimeters. In inches, it's about 10. So it's about a 10 inch. So, you take your board here. I gotta scooch things around. And you put your insert in there. Now this could be on your pottery wheel, if you're a wheel thrower or have a wheel. And then you put your rim template down. And I think I'm actually gonna grab my banding wheel because although it's not a pottery wheel. A banding wheel is a really nice thing to have in your studio. You hope Jeff makes my other, well, we'll have to ask Jeff to make the other rim templates. Right now they're available as digital downloads. You can make them yourselves, but it would be nice. Yes, well, let's all ask Jeff to do that and then maybe, I think he was gonna try to watch. <laughs> And then he'll be inundated with everybody asking him. All right, so we've got our rim template on, and we've got this locked in, and then we've picked the form size we're going to use. See our holes line up. So I'm going to go with the center hole here. I'm just wiggle it around until it gets on there. So those of you who struggle with cutting out a rim template and then flipping the pattern onto your form. And that's how I usually do it, and it, it's just how I work. But so many folks struggle with that, so this is a foolproof way you're not gonna mess it up at all. All right, so you're gonna take your clay and you're gonna drape it. And then we're just gonna use our hands, and we'll just kinda pull it towards us a little bit. Just a little, just to flatten it down. Am I still missing my, my Dolan knife? You know it. I have got my uh, 220C, though, to the rescue. So I'm not, I'm not without a knife. And it will turn up. And I, in fact, have two. So they'll turn up. All right, so I'm just going to smooth this towards the form. And that helps shape it. And then I'm just going to spin it. If you're not spinning, you can just smooth it like this. But look at 
spinning is so, so fancy. Now I'm not trying to apply a lot of pressure. I'm not trying to crush the clay. I'm just smoothing it and I want to make sure that it's taking on the shape of the form. So if you want to put a foot on this, you can. We're not going to put a foot just for fun, but you could. Now for cutting these out, I think a needle tool works best. It's up to you what you want to use. So we're just going to come in until we hit the rim template. And then I'm going to cut a little bit away so you can see that rim template is in there. And so we're going to cut along it. And some people like to do a pre-cut like this first. Now if you're doing a foot, we could actually, I wonder if I could still do it, freehand cut a foot <laughs> if you want. Look, I just made a foot freehand cut. Um, if you wanted to slip and score this, we could attach that up there. But then it has to dry before I can flip it out. Maybe I'll save it for later. We'll see. So do you see how easy it could be to make a foot if you wanted one? The rest of that can just get rolled up and used again, wedged up. All right, so you just follow this rim template. And if it's a new rim template and you don't know what the shape looks like, I suggest this, <laughs> having one out so that when you're going around it, you know where you're, you kind of have an idea as to what direction you should be pressing in. So this one here has a point and then it has a bump and a bump and a bump and then comes back up, a swoop up to the point. So do you see how that's cutting out our shape right there? So you follow your bump, 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 and then swoop up. And you could just cut off if you wanted to, if that's easier for you. Bump, 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 swoop up. So I don't do it this way because I don't have the patience for this part. I think it's great, but th that's my, my main reason. All right, I'm just going to go back and get my swoop ups because I swooped up from one side, but I want to make sure I cut that. All right, so now you're going to want to clean your edge up a bit. So I'm just going to take a damp sponge and I'm just going to gently let it rest against the edge. And then I'll just take my finger and just trace that rim template pattern. I am going to go ahead and make one of the peace and love bowls because I know you guys want to see that. And I do believe I did that. I thought I did it in a tutorial. Maybe it was, maybe I started it. Maybe I didn't, I don't remember. All right, so this is done now. I like to let them set for a little bit until I flip it out because if your clay is really, really soft, it'll just fall back down. Now the great thing about these um, rim templates is, I don't know if I can show you without, it won't fall off, but you see we've got the little, there it is. There's our little piece in there. If we press up on this, see how it releases just like that? And so you only need one board, right? Because I just took this off. And if you wanted to make another one, you could go ahead and make another one right away. I do like to let it set for a tiny bit before I take the rim template off, but some folks don't. Some folks take the rim template off right away. And then your board, your little insert comes right off. So we'll just sit that over there. And then if you want to take the rim template off, this is why there's the holes in it and you just, there it is. <laughs> Let me grab it. Ta-da! And so we've got, see our edge right there? And so you're just going to let this sit somewhere for a little while before you take it off. I usually will have a uh, jar of glaze hanging out because you know pottery studio and such 
So you just take your jar and you set it on the jar and it just sits there until it's ready to be flipped out. Uh, depending how humid your studio is, if it's really humid, you'll be able to pop it out in an hour, an hour or less. It's very humid here, so I probably won't be able to pop mine out until the very end of the broadcast. We'll do that, we'll pop it out for you guys. I made the peace and love in prime time. Oh, you use a slingshot tool to trim around the rim template, yes. I don't have the slingshot tool, but you know what you could use, my dears? A uh, very simple cheese cutter. So if you wanted, and that actually probably be a little simpler. I don't think I can get the rim template back on and line it up. But what you would do, pretend, I'm gonna show you. I don't know if I can get it to line up. Probably not, that's asking a lot. But rim template, you put this up against it and you just do, 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 do all the way around. But for that to work, you have to pop this out. You can't have it flat, no. So, all right, we're gonna take it off the rim template now. So you've made hundreds of plates using the original wall, but the RWD2 seems more fragile and not had one turn out, so you don't know what you're doing wrong. I have both of them, and I switched to the WA2, and I haven't seen any difference with the, are you talking about the WA2 system or the RD2 forms? because they came out the same time and I know it can be a tiny bit confusing. All right, will you, will you get that ready to answer me? I will work on the next thing because we got a lot to do and not as much time as I wish we all had together. The slingshot tool, I bought one um, and I don't know what happened to it. This, it might've been when I was at the Enseca where my bag with my dirty girl shirt got stolen and all that. So when that happened, I just, that was it. I didn't bother getting another one. Okay, moving forward, I have got, again, another slab. I think I'm just gonna grab this and this. We'll work on that. All right, so if you don't have a rim template, you can still make a plate with these and get a perfect circle, just so you know. All you do is you actually use the form to cut the circle out and then you turn it over and you flip it on it. And that's exactly what I did for this plate here and for this plate here. So these two plates, that's what I did for these. I just used the form as my template. So I got a perfect circle with each one of them and then I just draped it back on the form that I was using. So it's really easy and simple, and I like it when things can be that way, and I don't have to worry about having room templates or all kinds of things. Now I do have a lot of them, but you don't have to have them. All right, so another slab of clay. Uh, I don't think I said, this is Laguna B-Mix 5 stoneware without grog, but it does not matter what clay you use. You can use any clay you want. There's, you can use this for dark clay, you can use it for earthenware, you can use it for porcelain, whatever you feel like using, it'll work. All right, so I do need to thin this down. And I'm gonna just grab that rolling pin again and just roll it out. You made plates with the WA2. Um, you mean the RD2 forms, because the WA2 is the boards. The RD2 are these. I have found between the traditional GR pottery forms and the RD2 forms is the RD2 forms like to be left on a bit longer. And if you leave it on till it's a good leather hard, you're gonna be fine. All right, so what did we say we wanted to do? You guys wanted to see peace and love. Um, you could do a bowl with a different pattern on it though.
Do I benefit from people sending stars to you? Um, I have no idea. I know Facebook has these programs where you can buy things, but I have maybe seen, not, I, I don't know, I think you get like a thousandth of a cent <laughs> from a star. It's ridiculous. All right, I'm gonna show you as if we didn't have a template first, and then I'll show you with, with the template. All right, so let's pretend we don't have a template. I'm not even putting texture on it. That's, this would be if I'm making a scrofito plate. So I start by just making my circle, then I remove the form, and if I wanted a foot, I would use this for the foot. I, I don't want a foot, but if I did, and then I would just smooth out the edge with a damp sponge before I drape it. And I would just take this, I mean, geez, we've gone this far, maybe we'll just make one. And then I will, and then I will make a smaller plate. I have to wedge up some clay though. So, and then we just drape it. Ta-da, like this. Flip it over. If it sticks, use your finger, get up in there, and just walk it around to release until, shaky, shaky, it comes off. And then, same thing as before, we just smooth it down. like that. And honestly, this I will leave on until it's a nice, very dry leather hard and then flip it off. There's no need to take it off. It just dries on the board. As long as you're drying it in an area where there's not a breeze blowing across it, where you're not having sun shining on it, you shouldn't have any problems with it. Technical it, problem. We're having a technical problem. Yeah, that, that mic pack is picking up interference from the cameras. So I'm going to have you pop over here and I'm going to sort it out for you. All right, I'll be right back. I got to, did you tell everybody? <laughs> All right, give me another mic pack. All right, so you plug that in, and I'll plug this in. All right, do I show now? Yeah. Now How are we good? Are we good now? Can you hear me now? All right, so I'm just going to flip this back off because I wanted to show you that is how easy it is. We could have made a plate. Like that would have been a plate, right? But it's not. But it could have been. You didn't leave them on. Try leaving them on longer, and I think they'll be good. So for like these graffito ones here, like this, I left it on until it was ready for me to flip off and or flip out, however, whatever you want to use to describe it, and then put my underglaze on it, and then let it set overnight again, covered, and then carved it. Sound good now? Good. Mic's getting soft. Yeah, we switched the mic, so it should be good now. Um, new studio, lots of new things trying out, so sometimes the sound goes a little wibbly wobbly. All right, we're gonna do, either way, we're gonna do some sort of a bowl, I think. So let's go ahead and we'll do it on the smaller one. And then I'll just drape it a lot. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, what do we want? Want the Marrakesh again? Or do you guys want to do the marigold? Either one is nice. That would be good. Maybe I'll do the Marrakesh though. That size. All right, let's put a texture on it. Uh, Marrakesh, what do we want? Marrakesh, we should use the Moroccan tile because it goes so well. All right, done. So now we'll cut out our shape. Now I'm just going to use the needle tool. And you could make your plates this way instead of doing it with the rim template under the clay. And if you have that shotgun tool from Dirty Girls, or if you have a cheese cutter, that'll work just as well. It's not as fancy. 
but you could probably go to your nearest grocery store and pick up a cheese cutter like today. And then order yourself one of the slingshot tools, right? So you could do this, everything right up to what I just did, and use it on any one of the GR pottery forms. You don't have to use it with the ones that I'm going to be using it with. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean my edge up. And then let's release this. Teresa says there's a very loud beeping sound on and off. Someone's getting a rectangle advertisement at the bottom of the screen. If you're on Facebook, you would, but um, Facebook can do ads. I cannot control Facebook, but on Clayshare, we do not have ads. So if you're getting an ad, that would be um, your opportunity to thank Facebook for doing that because that's all them. That's why we have Clayshare Prime where we do broadcasting and the Clayshare app as well as Clayshare.com, so that only, only Clayshare stuff's on there, no ads. All right, so we want to make a bowl form. So we're gonna use this as a drape mold, but it's not as long as a drape mold is, and that's okay, it doesn't have to be. We've got it on there, I'm just gonna turn it a few times and make sure I have it lined up. You can use a ruler to measure your spacing if you want to, or you know the human eye is actually really good at gauging something, whether it's even. So that, for pottery, I find is usually good enough. All right, so we're gonna flip this over, and there we have it. And look, there it is, all wonky like that. We don't want that. That's okay, we're gonna fix that. All right, so using my banding wheel and another fancy tool, again, the jar glaze. Um, actually, you know what? Anything that gets this up, will work. So if you have the wallies, that will be enough of a raise on it so that you can see it. So just sit it on something. Um, I have some other banding wheels. I have an Amico one, which is really, really old, but it's, it's very uh, good for this kind of thing because it's a smaller wheel head. All right, so we're just gonna walk this down with our hands. Yeah, it's Facebook's, Facebook's sending ads at you because that's how Facebook pays for Facebook, by selling ads and showing it to people. Luann, that's why you're getting that. It's not us. We don't do that. Okay. And they're showing you probably clay-related things because we're a clay company. They're targeting you. So we're just going to smooth and spin. And when we get to here... So our, our actual form stops here. So this whole space is just floating in air. But what will happen is the clay really wants to continue that arc. So we're gonna let it, we're not gonna fight with it. We're just gonna let it do its thing. We're just gonna smooth it out. And you can also use your hands. You see, I'm just making sure that that's not going under. What you definitely do not want to do is put pressure right here and pinch. If you pinch into the form, and as it dries, it's gonna crack as it tries to lift up in the drying process. So you do wanna go around after you've smoothed it and just make sure you didn't crush it on there. Now, if you want a foot on here, of course you could do that. Um, you know, right here, I'm just feeling where the transition comes up. This is a great spot for feet. I can put a foot on this. I won't be able to flip it out with a foot as quickly. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, if you flip it out with a foot and it's too wet, it'll sag. But we'll put a foot on this one and then we'll not flip that one out, we'll flip the other one out. What do you guys think, sound good? So I roll the slabs out about 3 8 of an inch when I start on my slab roller. But that is really quite thick. And the reason I roll them that thick is because I never know exactly what I'm making. You know, I could be making large, um, you know, 22 inch platters 
and you want them thicker for big pieces like that. But also I could be doing smaller things like this. So I'll roll them out thicker than I need and then I just go ahead and thin them down to what I want to work with. So ideally I want to get them to, well, honestly, I think I, I'm doing them at, what'd we say? Three sixteenths, five sixteenths? Which one was it, Kev? Do you remember what we measured the other day? I think it's three sixteenths is what I often end up at. So we've got some scrap clay here and we're gonna make a foot. And I'll show you a quick, easy way. Now you've seen me use the foot maker a million times, I know. And I love my foot maker, but I'm going to do it this way. All right, so once you smooth your clay out, you can make your foot. And I'm using just a little strip right here. And let's measure this guy, because this one is... This one's a quarter of an inch. So we're going to cut a strip and just hold on to the strip here. So it's a quarter of an inch thick by three quarters of an inch tall. So that's one foot right there. And if you have longer strips of clay, you could just do one, but we don't. So we're going to do two strips and join them together. All right, so here's our two strips right there. So now we're going to slip and score and attach. <laughs> no foot. Don't put a foot on it. Do you don't want me to put a foot? You don't want to see a foot? You guys don't want to see how I put a foot on something? <laughs> How fresh slash wet is your clay? Um, we can talk about that if you want. So I don't know if this gets it across. Do you see how flexible this is? Um, it's not sticky, but it's definitely soft clay. Um, it won't support itself, right? When you try, you take a flat, flat piece and you try to hold it out, it just kind of sags down. So this is one I took out of the bag, rolled it out, and used it, I don't know, about 30 minutes later, but I also kept it covered in plastic, so that's a big thing. Yes, foot. <laughs> I have one without, okay, so here's the compromise. I have, <laughs> I have one <laughs> that's drying without a foot. We're gonna put a foot on this one, okay? This one gets the foot, the other one, no foot. All right, so there's our compromise. One foot, one no foot. I'm going to grab my slip and a serrated rib. And again, gauging where the foot should be. It's about right there. The other thing you could do, oh, see, if your form wasn't covered up with clay like my other one is, you could sit it on here. But we're just going to go like this, slipping and scoring. However you like to slip and score is fine. Some people like to score it all up a lot and then use a paintbrush with slip and slip it up, which is how I used to do it, but I just really like the one and done. I don't wanna, I'm trying to simplify my life in some ways. You know, you know, it's how it is. Okay, so slip and score our feet. And this is a small plate, so we only need one foot ring. If we were doing a big plate, I would do a center ring and then I would do a outer ring. So just line this up. Oh, it's almost, look at that, it's so close. If my clay had been a little longer, that's okay. I'm just gonna cut. those ends and let's take another piece. Let's 
flip and score the join and then press together. I'm just going to use my rib to smooth it out. And you won't even be able to tell there's a join there. I do like it better when the clay is as long as I need it or just a little longer and I don't have to join two pieces, but you, you can see that it's completely acceptable to join them. All right, now we can position our foot ring because I didn't stick it down all the way yet. I just set it on there. So now you can go back and you can move it around a little bit. Try to get it as round as you want to. A uh, really great trick, this one might be too big. You can take, this one's too big, a cookie cutter. Let's see if the next size down will work. And sometimes you can put it on the inside and use that to round your foot ring with. So that did a fairly good job. And then I'm gonna take my sponge, get it damp. I'm just gonna wrap it over the end. Just make that little taco out of it and just hold it on there. And then I'm just gonna use my fingers, that pinching motion right there like this. Like you're making little shadow birds you know, and make little shadow puppets. And then we'll press downward a bit more. You'll hear kind of little popping noises and squishing noises. Maybe it's squelching noises. You'll hear squelching. And that's the slip and clay all being squished together here. You want to make sure your foot is on well, because if not, you could bisque fire this and lift it up and it could just be sitting there on the shelf. The foot's sitting there looking at you while you've got your bowl in your hands. Now you could always sand it down and you now have a bowl without a foot, but you know, if you meant to have a foot, that's very sad. All right, using the side of my finger, I'm just smoothing everything out. And then now I'm gonna shape it a little more. If you like wheel throwing, you could wheel throw a cylinder and cut little rings off and use them. So you would throw your cylinder to the dimensions you needed for your foot and then cut it and attach it. That's how I used to make all my feet for hand-built plates for years and years. And then you just have these little rings, you just stick them on. Works really well. All right. Now, smooth it out. And I think we're pretty much done. You know, if you really want to get into those corners and smooth them out, you could use something like this little Kemper sculpting tool. Or if you have a clay shaper, also known as a color shaper, little rubber silicone tip tool. But that's it, the foot's on and the plate, really it's done. You know, if you want to, you could go ahead and take a wear board and you just sit it on there, tap it a little bit and that flattens the foot ring so you don't have to worry about it being um, not level because nobody wants a kind of unlevel bowl. <laughs> so will the plate with the foot slump when firing? No, it won't and that's because we only made the foot uh, not even six inches in diameter. So I have found that if I keep my foot ring six inches or smaller for the, the like only foot ring, so when I'm doing just one, if I do six or smaller, we don't have any problems with slumping. If it's bigger than six, then I usually will do a second smaller one. Um, let me see, do I have a, yeah, here. All right, so this plate here, has got two, see? So it's got two foot rings on it because this larger one is way too big. And if I didn't put the little one in here to support it, see it sticking up there? What would happen is in the firing, it would potentially slump. And you might be okay with that. And, and it's really not the end of the world if that happens, but it's much nicer when the plate doesn't, see how it doesn't slump? Do you see? There you go. See how it's beautifully, 
flat or as flat as we want it with the form. It, it's the shape we want. So let me just tell you, once this shrinks, this is now seven and a quarter inches across, but it shrunk about 12 to 13 percent. This was porcelain, so porcelain shrinks a lot. So this was a probably seven and three quarter inch, maybe, maybe seven and a half. I don't, I mean, I, sorry, going, going down. All right, so this right here, two, two feet, if you're going to do the bigger ones, so that's with the 12 inch right here. So if you're doing the 12 inch, see it's big. See this spans? That's a lot. Let's see what that is. That is uh, eight, almost eight and a half inches. Centimeter, folks, I'm going to tell you. 21 and a half centimeters. That's, that's too big. So either no foot or two foot rings on this, if you're going to do that. For um, this, oh, you want me to tell you what centimeters was for this? 14 centimeters across. So what would my, sticking with my six inches, that would be a 15 centimeter. So 15 centimeter foot ring is good. Bigger than 15 centimeters, you want to do two. So you do a second one in there and then... You don't have to worry about slumping. Great decal. Oh, this isn't a decal. This is hand carved sgraffito. But it would be a great decal, wouldn't it? No, I carved this all freehand. This is um, about five hours of carving to get this design. So that they're, they're, they're sakura blossoms with the vining pattern that I just wanted to do. Uh, I did have someone ask me if I was going to do decals of my Sakura patterns, because I have a lot of them. Maybe. We'll see. Could happen. Not opposed. All right. So we can flip out the piece we did that doesn't have a foot. It's a little wet. Ideally, I would let it sit longer, but we are pressed for time, because we have to give stuff away. And I have to set up for another tutorial because we're making mini bakers. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, carving is my love. It's my favorite. I've been carving for about 23 years. And I do love to do it. But I don't get as much time as I used to. All right. Let's flip this guy over. So here, I'm going to take it off the off the pint of glaze. And you'll notice sometimes clay things, when they get really wet, they might get mold and stuff on them. Just put them in the sun, let them dry, they'll be fine. Happens to so many things. All right, ready? There it is, flip it over. And then you just lift it out, and there you have it. If your clay is too soft, and we were talking about these and it's better to let it sit longer. I would not take this off if it wasn't for you guys. If it wasn't for you all, I would leave this on and I would let it stay on the form probably till tomorrow morning. And then I would flip it off when it was firm enough that I could hold it by like this. So when I could lift it up like this on its own and I could hold it up. But because I really wanted to show you all and so believe it or not, this plate here, this size plate, is going to shrink to be the size in my hand. So look at, look at the difference. Is that hard to believe? Yeah. So my clay is too soft, I can tell already. I will put it back on the form after we end the broadcast so that I can save my piece and prevent warping. I mean, I could leave it like this and it'll keep slumping down and I'll have a very... Um, flat plate, which is not a bad thing. It's just not necessarily what I want. So your bowl rim seem to warp when fired. So if they're warping just on one side, it could be a drying issue where maybe they dried um, too much on one side while they were on the form or off the form. If you have a fan, if you have an air duct or any kind of air blowing, if they were in the sunshine and the sun shined on one corner, 
of the piece, it can dry it faster. And what happens is it dries faster, it's going to shrink. It's going to shrink and kind of curl up a bit, and you'll get warping. I actually have one that did that. Um, I don't think I have it in here with me right now. But it, it, I left the piece out, and I thought I covered it, but one side wasn't covered properly. It's over there. Hold on. I'm going to grab it, because I want to share it with you, because it happens. And it's all in making. I did a really great uh, Good Morning Clay Share where we had a discussion about preventing cracking. And we talked a lot about warping. Do you see this right here? Do you see how pronounced that is? Do you see how much that kind of goes up in that area? That's because this part of the clay right here dried too fast. And when I came back out, it was almost white. And the rest was still like this color, like the, the, the beigey color, so, or the tan, whatever it is. But do you see how it kind of looks like it almost got hit, but it didn't? And you can see it here, too. It's still a great plate. It was a, it was a fun one. Here's, again, a double foot ring made with the same system. But that warping, it's because I took it off too soon. So, or no, it's because I had it uncovered. But if you take it off too soon, you could also get warping. So keep that in mind. That's how you broke your platter. By leaving it uncovered or this something blue on it, like air blue on it. Yeah, I know. It's very disappointing. The good news is you saw how easy it was to make this. It's one plate. It's just clay. If it doesn't work, just make another. You'll make a better one the next time. And you'll have had more practice, so you'll get better. It's good. It's good. Could you spray it with water? Uh, no, because it's already dried so much, you spray it with water, it's going to absorb water at a different rate. It'll probably actually crack even more if you do that to it. So once, once that happens, it's kind of a done deal. All you can do is put it in the firing, like let it dry, put it through the firing, and hope that somehow it writes itself. But as you saw on that one, it didn't. So ooh, what's the glaze on the warped plate? So this is red iron oxide, which is on the rim. That's the brown. And the same with on the back, and then red hot tamale stroke and coat. And then for the white color, it's cream from Clayscapes. So it's Clayscapes cream. That's the glaze. It's just a very simple, and I actually brushed it on. You can kind of see brush strokes. It has a very farmhouse uh, appeal to it. I, I really like it. There's a little clay on there. But yeah, I think, I think it came out really nice, rather rustic, which is what I was going for, like a rustic holiday piece. So I kept it because I like it. And this right here, although I wouldn't sell a piece like this to somebody, why wouldn't I use this? It's, it's food safe. It's cute. Um, and I have it. So why wouldn't I use it? I would keep it. So I did. The lifting and the edge, yeah. OK, so we are going to give away a RD2 form pack and a WA2 system from GR Pottery Forms. A huge thank you to Jeff at GR Pottery Forms for sponsoring Clayshare for the month of July. Yay! Um, we're also doing a promo with them. Use the code CLAYSHARE, all caps, and you can save 15% off GR Pottery Forms. Now, I'm going to be doing these mini bakers next with handles. And actually, the handles that I'm using are the Diamond Core Tools uh, mini handheld extruders. And I just found out that Diamond Core Tools is doing a BOGO. So if you buy one, you get one. Diamond Core Tools is going to be joining us in August as the sponsor. So they're going to be doing, I, I'm sure Nikolai is going to be here doing a bunch of demos. I think they got some new products that they're going to be premiering in August. And they always have great deals going on. So yeah, we got JR Pottery Forms right now, and that's amazing. But August, we have Diamond Core Tools. And then September, we have Paula McCoy from Colors for Earth. It just gets better and better as the year goes on. All right. Any other things I got to answer for this? All right, the last clay share business we have 
is we have a workshop coming up this Saturday with Annie Kreisberg. It's from Form to Function. It's a hand building workshop. It's a three part, six hour workshop. Part one is this Saturday, two hours then. Part two is the Saturday after, and then part three is the Saturday after that. She's going to have templates for you. She's going to have instructions for you. You're going to come do the workshop. It's virtual. So you'll watch, you'll learn from Annie. You can comment and interact with her. I'll be moderating. And then that week between, you have time to work on what she taught you. And then you come back and she'll teach you something else. And then the week between, you can work on that. So it's a really great workshop for those who like to work along and have direction and have a goal. And it's really fun because Annie is amazing and she and I have the best time ever when we're together. So you guys are in for lots of fun on Saturday. Okay, so the winner of the GR Pottery Farm pack that we're giving away tonight is Carrie White. Carrie White, congratulations. You get yourself the GR Pottery Forms WA2 RD2 form set. Um, I'm sure if you already have those, Jeff would be able to work something out for you too. So no worries there. If you didn't win, don't worry. We will be back next week. We'll have another giveaway. So you have a chance to win then. But of course, everybody's a winner when you're part of Clay Share, right? Annie is a great teacher. I agree. Yeah, you, you will not regret being part of her workshop. And the great thing about Clay Share workshops is you get them forever. So when you sign up for that workshop, you watch it, and you watch the live, and then you can watch replays over and over forever. Our premium members, you all get that 20% off the workshops. Yeah, I know, that's really nice. So even if you stop being a premium member, you still get all the workshops you've ever purchased through ClayShare. You get to have them forever, they're yours. All right. Oh, Carrie, I'm sorry. <laughs> so another Carrie was like, oh, <laughs> no. It's Carrie White. This Carrie is with a C. But maybe next time you'll win. <laughs> So the workshop is, I believe, 1 to 3 Eastern time. Kev, give me a nod. Yes? 1 to 3 Eastern time. Uh, so those of you out west, that's 10 a.m. Pacific. you got to get up. All right, everybody. Oh, the code for Diamond Core Tools is BOGO Summer 23. All right, so that's what we have for live today. We will be back with prime time where we're going to make those mini bakers using the Wallies. So I'll see my premium members then and everybody else. We'll see you next week.